This chapter deals with the isoelastic utility function, which is also called the CRRA utility function for constant relative risk aversion. I will put particular emphasis on the interpretation of the function and its properties and will show that these properties are very important when it comes to applications. One application you can find in the paper by Chen and co-authors published in 2021, Macro Level Efficiency of Health Expenditure Estimates for 15 Major Economies, which was published in Social Science and Medicine. The isoelastic utility function is one of the most frequently used utility functions in macroeconomics, particularly in dynamic macroeconomics. Its mathematical expression uh, you find here, where utility increases with consumption, and the parameter of the utility function is theta. That's the coefficient of relative risk aversion. Now, for a case of theta equal to zero, we would have risk neutral individuals. In this case, the utility function becomes linear as we see immediately, right? So theta zero means we have c to the power of one, which is a linear function. Then in the denominator, we would only have um, uh, one. Now, uh, the more risk averse individuals get, the larger would theta become, um, and that would increase, actually, uh, would kind of lead to a more concave utility function. It would lead to a utility function that um, uh, it has a more pronounced curvature, basically. And 1 over theta, so the inverse of the coefficient of relative risk aversion, is the elasticity of intertemporal substitution that measures the willingness of individuals to shift consumption over time, or in other words, to depart from consumption smoothing. So risk aversion and consumption smoothing in case of the isoelastic utility function are linked. So one is the inverse of the other. And we see that individuals who are more risk averse are less willing to depart from consumption smoothing. I will explain the derivation of this and the mathematical details later, but first I'd like to illustrate the utility function. So here you have the utility function plotted for the case of theta is equal to zero, so risk neutrality, for an increasing consumption level. So consumption starts here close to zero, and increases up to 10, and we see for a very low consumption level, utility would be negative. But as consumption increases above 1, uh, we have a positive utility level, and utility increases linearly with consumption in this case. Now I include the utility function for the case of theta equal to 0.5. So these are now already risk averse individuals and we see the function becomes more concave, if you will. So the curvature becomes more pronounced. We see that it starts at the lower level here. So um, it's even more negative um, than the linear function for a low um, consumption level. And it does not increase that much. So we also have a lower utility level for higher consumption levels. The more you increase a theta, more risk averse households uh, become, and the more pronounced is the curvature of the utility function. What does risk aversion mean in this context? Basically, it means that an individual who has a higher theta would get a much lower utility level for a low consumption level. So that means the risk that an individual wants to avoid is to end up with a low consumption level at some point in time. For the risk neutral individual, for example, um, the negative utility is kind of bounded. So you cannot um, go uh, below this level where it intersects the uh, vertical axis here. But for the individual with theta is 1.5, you would get already a very low utility level when your consumption goes to zero. So a risk averse individual would try to avoid um, or would try everything to avoid ending up in one period with a very low uh, level of consumption. So if you offer this person a lottery, for example, where he can win kind of um, three times the money um, in the future that it has at the moment, but there is a small probability that the person will lose everything then such an individual would not buy a lottery ticket here, right? Because the additional utility it can get is very limited because of the, the utility function is already very flat here, but it can lose a lot if it ends up with 
a low income and a low level of consumption. For the risk neutral individual, this is not the case. So here, if you offer this person, say, um, uh, a situation where it can win uh, three times the amount of money that it has, but there is a small probability of losing everything, then this person would most likely buy this uh, ticket because um, it's not so bad to end up with uh, nothing for this individual than for the individual with the high risk aversion. This already leads to a very intuitive explanation for why uh, the elasticity of intertemporal substitution is the inverse of the coefficient of relative risk aversion. So why? Because an individual that uh, is very risk averse uh, does not want to depart from consumption smoothing, which means um, that it does not want to have a higher level of consumption in some periods uh, in exchange for a lower in other periods. It prefers to have the same level of consumption all the time because it does not get um, quite a lot for higher consumption, but it can lose a lot for lower consumption. So this person would strive to have the same level of consumption in every period and not to depart from this consumption smoothing. So the elasticity of intertemporal substitution is very low for such an individual. Mathematically, the elasticity of intertemporal substitution is defined as the negative of the derivative of the utility function at the point uh, consumption point divided by the second derivative multiplied by the level of consumption. So essentially what this provides you with is the change in utility at a certain level of consumption that you can get by having a higher level of consumption divided by the curvature of the utility function. So how much this would change actually the shape of the utility function. And we can calculate this easily for the isoelastic utility function. So the first derivative is easy. 1 minus theta comes down. It cancels out with the denominator. The minus 1 cancels out. And we have c to the power of minus theta as the first derivative. And that's what we have here. The second derivative is that the minus theta comes down and the exponent is reduced again by 1. So this is the second derivative. And then we just plug in these expressions then uh, a lot cancels out because if I multiply c to the power of minus theta minus 1 with c what I get is c to the power of minus uh, theta and then the c to the power of minus theta in the numerator and the c to the power of minus theta in the denominator they cancel out and the negative sign in the uh, that we have here and the negative sign in the denominator cancel out and the result is 1 over theta. So indeed, the elasticity of intertemporal substitution is the inverse of the coefficient of relative risk aversion. And as I said, these two parameters cannot be separated in the isoelastic utility case or in the CRRA utility case. Important special case of the isoelastic utility function is the case in which theta converges to 1. If we look at the utility function, what would happen in this case? Well, if theta goes to 1, we have here c to the power of 0, which is 1, minus 1 is 0. And in the denominator, we also have 1 minus 1 is also 0. So this is an indeterminate expression. However, we can apply the rule of L'Hopital to uh, come up with the um, utility function in this case. And the rule of L'Hopital tells us that we uh, can take the derivative of the numerator and divide it by the derivative of the denominator with respect to uh, theta. And if we do this, what we get is in the denominator uh, minus 1, right? And in the numerator, the derivative is actually minus c to the power of 1 minus theta times the logarithm of c. Now, c to the power of 1 minus uh, theta for theta equal to 1 is equal to 1 again. So what remains is the logarithm of c. So the special case of the isoelastic utility function when theta goes to 1 is the logarithmic utility function. And this is shown here mathematically. And we, I will show later on that this is not the case if we use an isoelastic utility function without the minus 1 in the, deno in the numerator. So the minus 1 in the numerator is actually very important in this case if we deal with utility levels. The marginal utility is the same, irrespective of whether I have minus 1 here or not, because the 
um, in the derivative with respect to c, the minus 1 is a constant and drops out. But if we want to do anything with the level of utility, so an application um, of this utility function, then there is a huge difference actually of whether you use the minus 1 in the numerator or not. In the following, I also show graphically that the utility function converges to the logarithmic case when theta converges to 1. So this graph here plots the isoelastic utility function for the case of theta equals 1.1. And again, a consumption level that starts a little bit above 0 and goes to 10. We see uh, the utility level uh, would be 0, so crosses the horizontal line for a consumption level of 1. It becomes le uh, negative for a consumption level below 1 and uh, positive for a consumption level above, and then it increases. Now I plot the same function, but for a theta parameter that is equal to 0.9. And we see the curvature is looking uh, a bit similar to the curvature of the utility function for the case of theta equals 1.1. Um, and if we also plot the case of theta 1.0001, then we see we are in between these two curves. So we can surmise that actually this uh, case of theta equals 1 would be an intermediate case and we can make theta smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, which would then lead to a utility function that becomes more and more equal to the logarithmic utility function, which I also plot here. So in the case of theta equals 1.0001, that's not in, uh, distinguishable anymore from the logarithmic utility function. So that illustrates graphically that the isoelastic utility function converges to the logarithmic utility function when theta converges to 1. Quite frequently, we see in the literature this function here applied instead of the function that we used previously as an isoelastic utility function, where uh, the minus 1 in the numerator is omitted. Now, as I said before, this would not change the first order conditions because the minus 1 is just a constant that drops out whenever we take the derivative of the function with respect to c. So all the choices that we want to model with such a utility function would not change. However, we see immediately that something changes because we could not anymore apply the rule of L'Hopital here. So if we plug in uh, theta uh, goes uh, to 1 in this utility function, we would have in the numerator 1 and in the denominator 0. And that's uh, not an expression for which we can apply the rule of uh, L'Hopital. And this can also be illustrated graphically. So here I plot the, this alternative specification for the case of theta equals 1.0001 which before in the original expression with the minus 1 in the numerator uh, came close to the logarithmic utility function. But here we see that it's not the logarithmic utility function. It's even a negative function that does not even come close to the logarithmic utility function. So the logarithmic utility function would not anymore be a special case of this utility function here. Perhaps more problematic for applications is, however, that the function uh, changes its location quite a bit depending on which value uh, theta takes. So here, for example, that's uh, the utility function for the case of uh, theta equals uh, 0.5 and for a consumption that varies between 0 and uh, 10. And now we see that this is in the positive uh, area, so utility is positive in this case. But um, the utility level is completely different from the one that we get here for a theta that equals 1.0001. And if we put in, say, theta 1.5, we again get a negative uh, utility level um, for all the cases of consumption that we consider here. So we see that the functions do not anymore coincide or intersect at the consumption level of 1. They did so in the original case when we had the minus 1 in the numerator. And the case of theta that goes to 1 
does not come any more close to the case of the logarithmic utility function. As I said, if we are only interested in the first order conditions with respect to consumption, then this doesn't matter because the minus one just uh, drops out uh, because it's a constant. But if we have, for example, endogenous health investments in the model, then uh, the difference between the two utility functions is crucial. So you see here that you end up with a negative utility level here, irrespective of the level of uh, consumption, say for this case of theta equals 1.5. Now, if you have endogenous health investments, the optimal thing to do would be to shorten your life as much as possible. So to invest nothing in health, to avoid having lots of lots of periods with negative utility. So the optimal thing actually in such a model to do would be to kill yourself. And that's ob obviously a very uh, awkward um, uh, result. So what various authors did to fix this is to add an arbitrarily large positive constant to the utility function. And obviously then you can make utility positive irrespective of how high consumption the consumption level is. But this is uh, first of all um, kind of a, an ad hoc uh, fix. And second, it does not lead to situations where uh, the model is very consistent with estimates across countries of the so-called value of a statistical life. The utility function with the minus one in the numerator, however, leads to um, es estimates. So if you plug in reasonable consumption levels and uh, risk aversion levels across countries, that is very much consistent with cross-country ev uh, evidence on this value of a statistical life. And in the case without the minus one in the uh, numerator, you have to adjust the arbitrary constant up and down by millions uh, sometimes of, um, of, of dollars in order to get to reasonable uh, values of the value of a statistical life. So my recommendation here would be to always use the isoelastic utility function with the minus one in the numerator.